Tell me a bit about Ellen. <laughs> I think, for me, for me, yeah. she was always a people person. She was always kind and helpful towards people all the time, yeah. wasn't she? Yeah, she loved making people happy. I was always vigilant about ingredients and things and watching out for those elements that would, that had caused issues in the past. But Ellen was also, yeah, Ellen yeah. was very good at good managing her what she was eating, she wasn't was, she? She was. she was very good. She came down saying she wasn't feeling very well, so she was going to have something to eat. And she made herself some cheese on toast and went back upstairs. And then about five minutes later, I heard her shouting. So I went up to the stairs and she was kind of on the half landing with her spacer and an inhaler. And I don't know, I just said, well, do you need an ambulance? And she just said, yes. Ellen, even though I don't think she was panicking, but she knew something was wrong. She came down, sat next, sat in front of us on the bottom of the stairs. Um, she put her hand on me knee, and she was eating, she said, said it was, "Daddy, please don't let us die." And I said back to her, "Don't worry, Ellen, you won't." She squeezed me like twice, and she turned blue, slumped over. And obviously, I was in a panic. I didn't know what to do. I think Delta handed us the phone from the, uh, yeah. the emergency services and they took a plier flat on the floor and do uh, chest compressions, which I did. It was incredibly stressful. And I always thought I was quite a calm person in good and in situations and didn't panic. And honestly, I, I did. As a father, I felt helpless. Within seconds, just watch the colour drain out of her face. You just know immediately. They just said that she'd had a heart attack and that they couldn't. <laughs> so me and Mum saw on the stairs, we just thought it was asthma, didn't we? That's all we thought it was. We just thought it was the same, and it wasn't the same. Officer said she, she came into our life surrounded by machines as they were born. Prematurely. So it inspired us to, to move forward and uh, well, set up the charity. So, I mean, at the minute, I think we've raised around £35,000 for the charity. And my target by the end of next year is 50, so lots more hard work. I think it was really important to support anything that raises awareness of anaphylaxis. Asthma wasn't a direct cause of Ellen's death. Um, and it was anaphyla uh, anaphylactic shock through eating some, we think, some crisps with um, crustaceans on, which I assume was probably on the flavouring. She did have allergic reaction to certain foods now and again, but it was always but minor, you, wasn't it? Yeah, but you don't make that link, do you? No. Between allergies, asthma and anaphylaxis. And for me, there is a link. Her body couldn't fight. The, the, the anaphylaxis reaction because she was already uh, asthmatic as well. I just showed she made one little mistake. She didn't just, like you say, our guard was down or whatever. She didn't just had something that you wouldn't normally have. It's incredibly important and you don't know how important it is until you lose your child. And I don't want anybody else to have to go through what I go through every single day. Like, it isn't just that day, the first year, it's forever, it's forever. When Ellen went to the asthma checkups, I think it would have been helpful to have something there, sort of raising that awareness of anaphylaxis and maybe the, you know, the allergies and the, I think the, for me, are kind of like the three A's, you know, allergies, asthma and anaphylaxis, um, or I suppose in a way bedfellows there, they're connected, they're not necessarily always all connected, but one, two, three of those things. I mean, we started out with allergies, then we moved on to asthma, and then obviously, ultimately, anaphylaxis. And of course, not everybody dies with anaphylaxis. Getting your asthma under well controlled would, would help you be able to fight something. Um, and obviously, with the allergy side of it, if you're aware that that could also potentially trigger an anaphylactic reaction. Maybe, unlike me, ask for more information. 
I think doctors will understand will understand it, but perhaps not link the allergy, asthma, anaphylaxis thing together. So joining those dots that actually these three things do go hand in hand. It's really, really difficult to to see how difficult life just is. Anybody who comes into contact with somebody that has you know, allergies or asthma um, and could be a candidate for anaphylaxis, just please take notice of them. I mean, I won't, be, I won't miss my child for the rest of my life until the day I die. And until the day I die, I want to raise awareness and help other people in her name so that her life meant something. There is another uh, website called Beat Asthma. So both Beat Asthma and Beat Anaphylaxis will give you loads of information about those conditions in an easy to read format. There'll be some stories from parents and things like that which will talk about it in a way that we really understand. I would encourage parents, educational professionals, doctors, anybody, family and friends family. of someone who's got asthma, allergies, to go on and have a look at that information.